We'd like to thank you for joining us for another episode of Looking to Jesus. As usual, my name is John Hines. I am joined by my co-host. Daniel Sanders, preacher for the Norwalk Church of Christ. I preach for the Church of Christ in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'd like to thank you for joining us. And this week, we have a special guest. We have Daniel's son, Corrigan, with us. Corrigan, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Good. So we appreciate him being on with us. And Corgan, how old are you? I am 17 years old. 17 years old, starting to look at colleges, things like that. And what I know about Corrigan, I know very few things, but one of the things I know is he really likes golf. Yes, I do. Uh, he's on the, the high school golf golf team and did pretty well this past year. And you're a Southpaw. I know that. So you're a lefty. Who are your favorite golfers? Do you like Phil Mickelson? Yeah, I do like him. Who are the other lefties on the tour? Do you know of any? He's the only one I know of. I'm sure there's others. Oh, Bubba Watson. Yeah. Bubba Watson's a lefty with the pink driver. Mike Weir. Mike Weir. That's true. Anyway. Canadian. But, no, this is not going to turn into golf hour. But what? <laughs> but I thought what we might talk about uh, today as we start thinking about spiritual matters the last few weeks we've been thinking about the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to take a little break from that. <clears throat> And we're going to be, I wanted to think about some of the sports metaphors or some of the sports analogies that are used in scripture. And there's a reason that, I think there's a reason that the, the figure is used so often. And it's because even back then, sports were popular. They, they had the Olympics. They had had the Olympics actually for, for a long time. And so it was, it was a figure that was well known especially in thinking about Paul and his missionary journeys as he's going up on the north side of the Mediterranean and he's going, you know, he's going through Corinth, he's going through Rome, he's going through Athens. Mm -hmm. It's like he's in Greece. Right. <laughs> and so he was, he was right there at the heart of, of a lot of these things. So it was a figure that was well known. So I thought just Corrigan with you being here, we might think about some of the, um, some of the passages. So we're going to start in second timothy chapter two and i thought we might just read the first daniel how far do you want to read i'll let you read where do you want to read to oh I'll, I'll read down to verse five carry on it says you therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in christ jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a good soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. When did you start golfing, Corgan? Well... I don't know for sure, but I've what, always... like three. Are you like one of those Tiger Woods guys? You're like started when you're two years old, six. Really, you've been golfing that long? Yeah, huh. I've been just mostly uh, putting on the greens while my uh, grandfather and my dad were playing. Actually, okay. So when you started getting into it at a competition level, and I'm I'm assuming just as you went along to just think about this concept, you know, in verse five. If anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Out of curiosity, have you ever had anyone in any of your competitions break the rules? Yes. So what happens at that point? Well, uh, he gets disqualified. And uh, one time it did happen and we, were, we won the match because of what happened. Yeah. So, so just that concept, the fact that it's like there's rules mm -hmm. and you got to follow the mm -hmm. rules. And I was, I was just thinking about that idea. And actually with the Olympics, there, there's actually a, a funny story. Um, and it involves the emperor Nero and there Nero was, and I'd have to look it up again, see what you're, I want to say it's in the sixties or sixties <coughs> or the seventies, but Nero was into the Olympics and he entered himself in into a chariot race and he fell out of he fell out of the chariot halfway through the race and he just proclaimed himself the winner <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's and everybody and that was actually that was one of the things that started leading to the Olympics decline 
because he want, he didn't follow the rules and there's no respect for it if if you don't follow the rules so here you, you have this figure that paul says if anyone competes in athletics he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules and there's rules so i would assume there's order as, with as, everything do what there's order with everything yeah so there's there's this ability of like everyone's on a level playing field with everything right. and so then we're all looking forward to that prize we're looking to be crowned the winner whatever however you want to take it this way but we're all fighting on the same plane there's no i mean the only advantage in, uh, that one may have like for instance when we talk about races or different things like that is our physical build yeah. but that 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 just okay someone might be better because their physical build they may be able to be disciplined a little bit more but we're all fighting to be able to we all compete under the same rules you all have to be able to you know i know over the, when we talk about for instance the olympics we've had the the doping scandals over the last few yeah. you know, olympics and everything right and what happens is some of those countries were eliminated from being able to compete or countries were not able to be Country will not be able to be algorithms going to love that little interjection. Going to be able to uh, <laughs> not, go, not going to be able to compete, you know, as a country, be recognized as a country. So we have the ability of being able to keep things in order. And what you were mentioning there, you know, here it is. We got to we got to compete according to the rules. And you know, when we talk about as Christians, we're to compete according to the rules. We got God's word as right. as as a guide as. I'm using it loosely as a quote unquote rule book. What, what, would you, what do you say to people, you know, when they're young, maybe they're not Christians, maybe they're thinking about becoming a Christian and they're like, well, I, I don't know enough to be a Christian yet. And I was thinking about that figure and, and I was thinking about the golf analogy and that you pick up the basics and do you know, you've been golfing now. How old are you? 17? Yeah. 17 so you've been golfing for 10 years now do you know every rule in the pga rule book no i do not and does that stop you from golfing it's like no now and even in pga events i've seen before where they may run into circumstances where where someone may violate a rule that they didn't know about and guess what it's still a violation mm -hmm. just because they don't know about it is not an excuse Right. But at the same time, there are basics. And I think in, in the church and in in the gospel, there are basics. First Corinthians chapter 12 talks about that. The, the, the foundation of the gospel, Jesus is death, burial and resurrection. And when we come to him and we turn from our sins, one of the things he says is come to me, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Well, you never stop learning. And so you learn more about the Lord by ruling by learning more about the standard mm -hmm. and the standards and you grow but we should not we we learn the basics right and that's what and, I and tell it's like that's the what basics I tell people. like that's where you start yeah it's like okay i'm a sinner i don't need to recount all my sins to the lord the lord knows i've sinned the the good confession is confessing that he is the son of god exactly and so we come and we turn from our sins we make the confession and we're baptized we rise to walk in newness of life and we're babes. It's like we're, you, you know, and how much does a baby know? Not very, not very much. Not they, much. they grow. And that's where they grow. <laughs> that's where the Hebrew author and Peter writes about being able right. to grow going from that baby food or going from the, the milk of right. the word to being able to take on yeah. stronger meats. You, there's, a, there's a learning process. You know, whenever I've talked to someone and they say, well, I don't know. And I, you know, people are looking for the perfect scenario. Right. Like, I got to know everything everything about it's the like, bible i can't be a babe in christ because i can't eat meat yeah you're not supposed to eat meat yet well you're supposed to drink milk yeah and desire no. the pure milk that you may grow exactly when i sit there and try to talk to someone it's like you know, they want that perfect scenario i want every, i want to know everything it's like if you're looking for that perfect situation like that you're never going to you're never going to meet it you're never going to be omniscient yeah <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. going to happen you're not god yeah well, you know, there's just no way of being able to know everything and being able to. You, know, you can know why. enough. You can know enough. You can know enough to be a Christian and be faithful. And that's where Jesus speaks in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, talking about being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you know, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why, you know, to be able to have your sins removed, how to be redeemed. And then what, what else? He says, teaching them to observe all things. Right. You know, teaching us. We learn. We right. continue to learn 
grow and develop and being able to follow the rules. We learn more about the rules. It's like, you know, using Corgan as, as this example, his first year, we were just kind of just new with the, with the program and everything, actually competing on a team. Yeah. And then the next year, we actually sat down, got to sit down with a PGA rule advisor, and he went over the rule book that mm -hmm. you were just talking about. And did you know everything about all the rules? No. But if he didn't know, guess what? He learned about it, or he would ask someone to be able to, hey, what does this rule mean, or right. this scenario that I'm in? This is the way, and the same thing as Christians. We don't know everything, so what do you do? You ask. You ask someone that maybe have a little yeah. bit more knowledge. You go to God in prayer. There's many different things that we can do to be able to help one another and to grow and for the, ourselves. The bigger issue is probably, rather than worrying about what you don't know, learn as you go, but the, the bigger issue may be obeying the rules with what you do know yeah because you know it's like okay no one's looking and you come up to your ball and it's in the rough and it's a foot off the fairway uh you don't get to kick it out <laughs> into the fairway yeah you don't get to tee it up in the rough what <laughs> you don't get to play off the ladies tees you don't get to you know you can clean your ball from mud on the green you don't get to clean your ball in the fairway you know st stuff like that mm -hmm. issues like that it's the rules you do know. I think where, spiritually speaking, where people run into more issues. You know, mm -hmm. people think, oh, what about what I don't know? It's like, what about what you do know? Yeah. I really think the Lord has made things in Scripture. It's it's fairly straightforward. Yeah. Things that you may not know right now, it may make sense as you learn, grow, develop, and learn a little bit more where it may not make sense or you may not have the full comprehension, but if you continue studying yeah. and maybe there's something else that's kind of in between leading up to that, that helps with your growth pattern right. of everything. And, and it may, the things we don't know may not necessarily have an effect yeah, and on how true. we walk day by day here. Namely, give me all the details of what heaven's going to look like. Yeah. It's like we know what Revelation says about heaven. We may know what other passages say about heaven, but some things we just don't know. The Lord has given us what we need, what we need. And that's the, the Timothy passage about all scriptures inspired by God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. He's given us the rule book. Yeah. And so we read it. One of the other things before we move on to our next passage there in verse five again, if anyone competes in athletics, or pardon me, it's actually verse four, so it's sort of a different metaphor because it's the soldier metaphor. Yeah, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And I wanted to just briefly mention, for one thing, Paul is writing to Timothy. This is not one of the letters to the churches, and so it's a little bit different. Paul's writing to a young preacher who's in Ephesus. And he's trying to encourage the young preacher to, frankly, do his job. And he uses this figure of the soldier and that he needs to please him who enlisted. The church in Ephesus did not enlist Timothy. That's right. The Lord enlisted Timothy. <laughs> and, and that's who Timothy worked for. If he, if he worked for the church in Ephesus, uh, there's going to come a time where they're going to reject sound doctrine. And Timothy could have been swayed by that. He didn't work for them in that sense. It was, it's the Lord who enlisted him. And he needed to please him and operate by those rules. Any additions you want to make to that, Daniel, before we move on? Just that idea. I, th I think sometimes, sometimes churches treat preachers like hirelings. And they think they can order preachers around because of that. And, and while certainly preachers... Are, are members of the local church and we are all committed to submit to one another but ultimately even even in churches with elders for example timothy is going to be told elders who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all that all may fear timothy did not work for the elders what gave timothy the right to rebuke an elder what gave him the authority to rebuke an elder it's because he didn't work for the elders he worked for the lord yeah he worked for the chief shepherd and so he had this he had this, however you want to say it, this uh, obligation to please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So that responsibility. Anyway, sometimes folks get, get off base on that and they start mistreating preachers. And, and here 
this is one of the passages we know who enlisted Timothy, and that's like I said, Paul's writing to Timothy. This is this is sort of like I, I always go to Timothy and Titus. These are like preacher letters, yeah, encouraging yeah. them to continue with the work and being able to uphold yeah, the, yeah. The, the church yeah, and yeah. being able to establish right. establish the churches where they were at even right. further, right? With God's and, and so work. they're a little bit different, <clears throat> yeah. Than there, there's a reason the qualifications for elders are giving given in these two letters, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, it's because this was the preacher's role. Um, anyway, we'll we'll save some of that for another discussion, perhaps. The next verse, I, I wanted to go to 1 Corinthians now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And let's see, where are we headed to, Daniel? What verse? 24, I think. I guess it would help if I would actually get in 1 Corinthians, wouldn't it? Or as someone once said, 1 Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you're looking in Second Corinthians nine, that would be fun because you would find verse twenty four there. But anyway, anyway, First Corinthians chapter nine, take it away. Go ahead, Corgan, read that for us. Twenty four to twenty seven. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one who receives the prize, run in such a way that you may obtain it? And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body, and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others I myself should become disqualified. You know, to use, just because you're familiar with golf, and I'm a little familiar with golf, I'm not that familiar with golf, but... How much self-discipline does it take? And I mean, and, and my point is, if you're not invested in it, it's like you could have the best coach in the world. You, you know, you could have, who who was Tiger Woods' coach? What was his name? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. His dad. Butch, Butch Harmon, I believe was his name. I think so. Anyway, you could have the best coach in the world, but if you're not self-disciplined, then what, good is going to do and, and to i've heard people say and here I'll, I'll get your reaction to this golf is easy what no, do you think it is not but and, and this is what they always say well with baseball the ball is moving but with golf it's just sitting there so it makes it easy right no <laughs> it's a, and, and anybody who goes out the first time they play golf what do they do how messy is it it's oh. it's pretty bad <laughs> And it goes like the old phrase, if you go if you go right, which you're you're a lefty, so it's the opposite way. But for me, if you go right, it's a slice. If you go left, it's a hook. If you go straight, it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's hard to hit it straight. Yeah, it's hard to get your it's hard to get your hands, your hips, your legs. It's hard to get everything lined out like it needs to be. Fluid momentum with everything. And I mean, it, it just takes it takes discipline. We'll, we'll probably talk more about that, but it's like you have to be invested in it, right? Yes. And I mean, you can have the best coach, but, and, and my point is when Paul talks about this and he says, but I discipline my body and that. What do you do when you, okay. What do you do when you're, when, when the season's over, what are you doing? I practice to get better okay. for the next season. And you do it on the course, do it at home sit there and do some different training with everything trying trying to get the idea of you know getting that that proper momentum being able to have that proper discipline that muscle memory that we're talking about as well and then making that application into christianity as well do you got to invest your time into christianity yes yeah you got to invest your time you can't just sit there and just say well i come on i come to church on sunday or and wednesday and then that's it that's good enough there's more than just that outside the the operating the quote unquote operating hours. You have work to do with studying, with giving time and attention to different. Things. It's an investment. When you say something is an investment of something, you're giving you're you're putting uh, you're putting effort. Like what you were just talking about, you're putting effort into this, and that's what Paul's also saying is, I discipline myself. I put the effort into this to be able to bring myself into subjection. And just that that idea of of subjection for one thing. Why does it why does it take discipline? 
and he, you know, I'm, I'm mindful of like when the Lord comes to the disciples in the garden of Gethsemane, he asked them to pray. They're all asleep. Yeah. And he says, could you not watch for one hour? And he talks about, he actually, he comes multiple times done. He, and one time he says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he's like, watch. And, and that's the thing, Paul, it's like, I bring my body into subjection. I discipline my body. I think in that the word there where it's like, literally he hits himself and he's like, I'm not playing games. I discipline myself because it's like, you're, you're, because what does he say there at the end? I can become what I could become disqualified. But, mm-hmm. but my point is you, you know, what should be done. Yeah. You, you know what you got to do. You know, if you want to win, you know what you got to do. But sometimes it's it's it takes work. <laughs> yeah. That that's my point. Yeah. It takes work and it's not necessarily easy. I think in some ways it's an easier life to follow the Lord, but at the same time the straight and narrow path is difficult to find it and it takes self-discipline. And you could again this is like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And that, Corgan, you could have you could have a good coach, you could have good teammates, you could have the best <clears throat> team around you. But if you're like, nah, I'm not feeling it today, <laughs> what's going to happen? It's, right? You you have to be disciplined. Yeah, it is what it it has to be that a person has to. You can lead a horse to water; they have to drink. They have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. I have to discipline myself. I have to do it. Elders may play a part in it. Over in Northridgeville, we have elders. Elders may play a part in it. My brethren may play a part in it. Whoever, my family may play a part in it. But if I'm not disciplined myself, it's all for naught. Yeah. I have to discipline myself. Right. It's like I got to make myself do it because there's times where Johnny doesn't want to get out of bed. (laughs) There, there's there may be times where it's like I don't want to do that I don't want to I don't want to do this I don't want to do that even though I know it needs to be done and I'm like oh and it's like no I've got to I have to deny myself take up my cross and follow the Lord you, you know that idea of taking up your cross daily it's like you can't Daniel you can't take up my cross no I can't take up Corgan's cross Corgan can't take up my cross and frankly Jesus bore his cross. And while that there may be benefits to that for us, namely the forgiveness of our sins, he still tells us, take up your cross daily and follow me. Jesus cannot deny myself for me. I've got to do that. And nobody else can do it. Absolutely. So when Paul's talking about it and he's like this idea, it's like, you got to bring it into subjection, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You got to, you got to be self, disciplined uh any questions comments anything about that passage before we move on yeah i just want we want to point out something else there you know what we're what we're running for what what you know looking at verse 24 and 25 you're running the race to receive the prize just like what it said there in second timothy but here paul gives a little bit more detail of it we're talking about the crown you know when people are running that race here in this life or competing in sports or whatever it may be they're competing for a prize right back then it was a crown it was a crown twisted of you know all like an olive branch i believe the with laurel. leaves laurel yeah. Uh, yeah. it's something right. something a little bit kind of noble looking right. so to speak but Corgan, what happens to that crown uh eventually it dies off it dies off you know it, what looks pretty what looks beautiful what looks noble and regal eventually it kind of looks decrepit yeah, you know, and so as Paul's pointing out there, we're when we're talking about our life as Christians, while we're competing as like an athlete would do, we're doing it for an eternal crown, a crown that's never going right. to fade away, a crown that's never going to perish, a crown that's you know it's not going to become decrepit. It's not you know it's always going to be there and it's going to last and stand forever. And I just want to just be able to just take note of this with some of the detail as we're looking at this because. You know, almost all the verse that we're talking about this morning talks about the crown. Right. And just want to just, you know, take note yeah. of, of this detail that Paul's writing. Yes, we understand, you know, we're talking about heaven. We're talking about heaven. We're talking about the eternal crown of glory of being able to have that one day. Yeah. We have to, as you point out, have to discipline ourselves, bring our body into subjection because 
I can still miss out on it if right. I'm not following the rules. Paul said, I, not he didn't say you. He went straight to the source of when he said, he said I myself could become right. disqualified. And there were so many people that held that high regard for Paul. You know, as we look here in First Corinthians, some of them were trying to say, you know, earlier on how they were baptized or taught by Paul, trying to make a big deal. But I said, he wanted to make a point of this. I right. can become disqualified too if I don't there's follow a whole, the rules. There's a whole lot of people in the world who believe that you cannot lose your salvation. Exactly. There's a whole, that is Protestantism. Not 100%, but a lot of them. Yeah, there, there are the, there are some who believe you can, like free will Baptists and, and those along those who take that route. But the vast majority of Protestantism, it was founded on the belief you could not lose your salvation. What's that and Paul say? says, "Yeah, you can. Yeah. I can. Yeah." And he talks about others who had who had suffered shipwreck according to the faith. Why? Because they were not disciplining themselves anymore. They were not running according to the rules. Uh, I think when I <clears throat> I was actually looking up. Uh, for a lesson I did on this, and there was someone who was running in one of the marathons, one of the big ones, Boston or New York, and he he didn't win it, but he he got a much high, he much lower time than he'd ever gotten before. And anymore, a lot of those marathoners they make them run wear electronic tags, yeah, and they're they're they have checkpoints throughout, and they looked after they saw his time, they looked it up on the map. And what this this dude about a third of the way through the race had hopped a bus <laughs> and had gone to the other end of the track, gotten off the bus and started running again. Yeah. And it's like, you can't do that. Yeah. That was our first point. You can't break the rules. Right. You don't get crowned if you break the rules. And, and just like we said in that first point, you'll be disqualified. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's it's just nothing. And that's a sad thing. Why would you cheat? You cheat because you want that crown. You're not going to get it if you don't obey the rules. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, watched, I watched a movie one time, and, and they have it's two military schools competing against each other, and one of the schools didn't. Is this Rudy? No. Oh. No. no. <clears throat> Major pain. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> and, and there at one point, the kids that he's got, they're just not. They're not working together. It's just it's just chaotic mess. It's not a true military until they bring in this guy. But anyway, so he knows that the next neighboring school over got the the current trophy, big, massive, like six foot tall trophy. And he has the kids go over there. And says, "Now you can go take this trophy." But it was all it was all a teaching point. They go try to take it. He called the school to tell them, "Hey, my kids are coming over to take it." Well, then they get busted and everything, and and one of the kids gets real upset. And finally, it all ever after everything they've been through, it all finally clicks. And he said, "Do you want to take that trophy?" He asked the kid that, and the kid turned around and said, "No, I want to earn it." Yeah, that's that's what we're, that's how we're supposed to be looking at it. We're not trying to take it, try to cheat, or try to try not deserve what we're what we're working forward. I want to earn it. I want to be able to work in a way that I'm going to get that prize following the rules following and, and doing it in an orderly way and we have again god's word and, and again we're not saying work salvation yeah we're still saved by grace right and we recognize that what we're saying is you, you know it's in titus where it talks about the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that we have to deny ungodliness yes. there's there is not a disconnect between grace and obedience oh it's grace through faith and so I don't even like saying, well, there's God's part in it, and then there's our part. Yeah. It's all, it's like, no, this is the plan. We're saved by grace. And when we've done everything that we can, we say we're unprofitable servants. We're saved by grace. Yeah. But we do need to obey. Yes. And the Lord expects us to obey. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done this? And I'm going to, and the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Verse 21 of Matthew 7, yeah. the verse prior to that, if you want to enter into heaven, you do the Father's will. Yeah, right. That's It's plain and simple, laid out for us. Right. And then we have the guidance to be able to grow from there and yep. learn more about the Father's will. Yep. All right. Next. Clay Corkin's got something else he wanted to add. Going back to like earning towards the crown, something like that. I watched, uh, I watched a book. A movie and we're reading a book right now and at school it's called unbroken based upon a true story and it's about a man named louis Zampernini. he uh 
he's a runner and when was capable of breaking the record in the the twenties and um he was able to go to the Olympics and he was not he was towards the back but at the last going towards the last lap he started running and managed to get fourth all the way from the back and it's just trying to get to that spot earning what you want to go towards put your effort in you yeah. know the the verse and we're familiar with the verse about um the the broad path and the narrow path yeah and that verse where it uses the word strive to enter through the narrow gate that word strive there i believe that's the word when you look at it in the greek it's something along the lines of agonizo but it's where we get our word agonize and it's like that's what you have to do you have to strive and it's like it takes work and you don't get to and, and you can tell in the um in the first century they were having the same problems that people have today they thought because god's grace was so great they could continue to sin and paul's like no that's not how this works <laughs> you you have to practice self-discipline it's like you have to discipline yourself you have to run according to the rules and it's and it's hard it's hard um but it's it's what we have to do mm -hmm. all right let's come up to hebrews 12 now hebrews chapter 12 and we're going to look in the first two verses and, and of course hebrews chapter 11 is the heroes of faith mm -hmm. and we just mentioned that because they're mentioned in the first two verses corrigan can you read hebrews 12 1 and 2 for us sure Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the, su the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank you. And just that idea of, can you imagine, you know, we've been using the golfing metaphor, and I was trying to think of a, of a parallel here, but can you imagine trying to, you know, tee off in a set of handcuffs? That would be really difficult, yeah. Um, and or, or just, you, you know, some other thing. And, and here we have the running metaphor. And it's like, when, you know, when you see people running, and it's like, they're not wearing weights. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, they're, they're when, when you're ready to run, it's like you, you lose the jewelry, you lose, usually, you lose everything. And you're trying to you 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 got to loosen up, and so that's you have this figure. I'll use a different sports analogy for this one. You going up there? You're playing baseball. You're in the batter's box. What do you have on your What do you have on your bat before you start swinging? The donut. You got the donut, which is what it's a weight. It's a weight to be able to try to. And I was thinking about that that parallel. The issue <clears> is is that you do that at practice, and we're not saying that you should sin just practice with sin yeah no that, no that's true but the idea of when you're going to step up to the plate and everything you lay it aside you lay it aside and you you i, I was thinking in football about wide receivers who don't wear many padding many pads on their on their legs yeah because they they want to run fast yeah they've got to run fast or you got the olympic swimmers who have to sit there and they'll shave their right. head and right. do all sorts of different things or put the cap on to be able to try to create any to eliminate any type of resistance and it's so like it, it's this figure where i mean i'd say but to go back to um to those or to those earliest of olympics i know in wrestling and they may have done it in running too i don't know but i know in wrestling they wrestled in the nude okay um they took this pretty seriously that it's like you don't want anything impeding you yeah. you don't want any you don't want to get hooked on anything you don't want anything that can be grabbed right stuff like that but this figure of you you lay aside every weight in the sin and you you run unimpeded and and obviously sin but also this verse includes the weight and there are things that may not be sinful that still person better be disciplined and it's you, you know the parable of the sower 
that third um the third soil there where it's um the thorny ground the thorny ground and it's the cares of the world the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things and you know the deceitfulness the the answer is not to enter a commune and to not to not have a job anymore that that's not the answer as long as we're in this world we will have cares of the world he who is married cares about how he may please his wife that idea and i was actually thinking about that passage daniel remind me after we're done recording <laughs> okay. i want to talk about something um because paul paul was able to run without care and actually that's what i that is what i was thinking about he did not have to care about how he could please his wife because he wasn't married. Right. And that allowed him more freedom than others. The Lord understands. The Lord understands that as long as we're in this world, we'll have certain cares of the world. Like marriage, like our spouse, like our children, like our jobs, like other things along those lines. But we need to be real careful because our jobs can impede us. Yeah. You know, our our families can impede us. And things like that. And it's like, we better be real careful because we're running a race. Absolutely. And so we just need to be mindful. And, and certainly we lay, we lay aside sin. But if something is coming between us and the Lord, whatever that is, eh, that ain't good. <laughs> the Lord comes first. Seek first the kingdom. And his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So that's what we do. We run. Verse 2, we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so... Once again, there we have that picture of grace, the author and finisher. And I always like it because, you know, here, Corgan, I'll put you on the spot. You're, you're I pretty, warned him. I warned him. I said you put him on the spot. <laughs> I will. You're pretty. You're pretty fit, young guy, right? Yeah. How would you feel if I started giving you diet advice? What are you gonna say? What are you gonna say, Corgan? Huh? <laughs> Am I real young and fit? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would be like, who are you to say anything if I gave you golfing advice? It's like, I, I've seen your swing. You've never seen my swing. Your swing is a lot better than my swing. <laughs> if I told you how to golf, would you be like, get real? <laughs> He's got the Charles Barkley swing, by the way. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not the yips. My point is to look at this passage in Hebrews who are we looking to there in verse two looking to Jesus and that he ran the race and that he ran the race better than we run the race and that he is our coach, but he's not a coach who has not been there. It's like he sympathizes yeah. with our weaknesses because he was tempted and that, that he's not a hypocrite. And he's like, he's been there yeah. and he, mm -hmm. he came in the flesh. He wrote the book on how to be able to achieve how to be able to work towards a promise of life. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's that, that author and fit. He, he authored it, but he also finished it yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, and, and let's use that as a segue to, to start to wrap things up. We're going to look in second Timothy four, where Paul uses the figure. Once again, second Timothy four, verse six he says, for I'm already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I've kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. So we have the crown once again. There is the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. And that you got to finish. You got to mm -hmm. run through the tape. And I mean, we've all seen videos of of runners who, and there, there's a famous one. I think the guy was from the college in Oregon. And he thought he was all alone. And he starts hot dogging it the last 50 yards. He was a long distance and he starts egging the crowd on and he doesn't see the guy behind him. Yep. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and he gets passed, he gets passed and it's like, you got to run through the tape. Now I, I will say the guy didn't give up. He slowed down was the problem. And, and so, you know, we've seen wide receivers you know, taking it into the end zone and they drop the ball on the one yard line. And it's mm -hmm. like, dude, 
hang on to the ball and run through the tape. <laughs> it's like cross the line. And Daniel, you and I, it's like, we haven't been alive that long, but we've seen people in their old age become unfaithful Yeah, towards the end. Yeah. And that's so sad. It is, you know, and that's where we're talking, Corey and I were talking about before you came in, what's the word we're looking for? How are we supposed to run the race, Corrigan? With what? With effort. Or With effort, but also endurance. endurance we're not yeah. running a hundred yard run. Yeah. You know, there, there, are, whenever I was running, I, I actually participated. I was on the track team. I did more field events just because of my build. I'm trying to visualize younger. this and I'm not having any success. I ran track. My dad, my dad ran track as well when he was younger. <laughs> Stop it! No, by, not laughing about your dad. I'm oh, laughing about me. Yeah, trying to figure it. Trying to figure it out with me. I could, you know. So, what happened was I did I did more field events, but then we had this we had the uh, the final competition to be able to see if we wanted to move on to you know state fine state more state like events and everything. Well, I I missed out on my field event that I was competing in, and then it was just kind of okay. I could be done, but then they said you know we're taking open invites to be able to compete for any other events. And my dad was sitting there talking to me. He's like, you know what? You should run. You know, nobody nobody from our school showed up for the running event. That was out of one person. And uh, I went in there and said, like, okay, we had the 50-yard dash, 100-yard dash. I competed in those. And actually, after it was all said and done, I finished in the top six on the 100, the 50, 100, and the 200. And it was kind of interesting, you know, my dad's like, oh, yeah. And then my dad was more of a distance runner himself with things. And he's like, you should do the 400. Okay. Went in there and I ran the 400. You know what I did? I tried to run at the, you know, it's just one big lap around the, around the field, around, right. around the track. But I tried to run it how I ran the 50 and the 100 and 200. And guess what happened? I yeah. ran out. Yeah. I ran out of steam. You know, and then he was like, well, you know, after that, he said, you can do the, you can do the 800. I was like, no, hmm. I could sit there and try to run the different, if I run the race, you know, when we talk about our race of life, what I'm getting at is it's not just a short burst and kind of like with what you were saying just a moment ago, seeing how people later on in life might, might fizzle out. We're running a race with endurance to finish the race, to continue to fight, to continue to keep everything. It takes discipline. It takes a consistent effort, not just a short burst of everything. That's where you, know, you mentioned the the, so, the thorny soil. What about that rocky soil? What happened to that right. seed? It shot up. It grew. It was planted and everything went, but then it didn't have the depth and it fizzled out. Yeah. You know. It, Corgan, that, that idea of endurance, it's actually showed up in two of our verses. The one is Hebrews, let us run with endurance. But the other one was where we started, where it talks about a soldier must endure hardship. Mm -hmm. So on your golf team, how many how many members are on that team? Ten. So you have ten men, and, boys and girls? Or uh, just, it says boys. Just, we have our own girls oh, team to gotcha, also. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so just out of curiosity, and what I'm, what I'm wanting to key in on here is that while there is a team aspect to our spiritual journey, namely the church, we are, we are judged individually mm -hmm. and that you have the team aspect right on the golf team out of curiosity. And I'm not, we, we should love our enemies. Of course. Um, do you like everybody on the team? Not all of them. <laughs> And, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but my, my point is you'll have people on your team who mistreat you and abuse you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what does a soldier have to endure hardship? And sometimes that hardship comes from your fellow soldiers. Sometimes that hardship comes from opposing armies. Some, whatever that the devil the devil works in different ways and i think in the church it's the same way that and that's where you have to have endurance mm -hmm. because sometimes your teammates aren't aren't doing what they should be doing and sometimes obvi and, and it's like it's one of the devil's devices and it's like you have to endure 
because sometimes trouble comes from outside, sometimes trouble comes from inside, mm-hmm. and some and it always requires self discipline because it can be real tempting to give up, you know. And it's like nope, because that crown, when Paul talks about, it, he says it's for me and for every one to all who have loved his appearing. And it's like God renders to each according to his own deeds to what we've done. So, you know, I just wanted to mention that, just that analogy, that there's a team aspect, but our judgment is individual. Mm -hmm. And so we're accountable ourselves individually. So we have to have to discipline. Daniel, you got anything else, dude? No. I think I nailed it with what we're trying to talk about with the sports and everything here. Yep. Athletics. Yep. yep. Thought it was a good study. I hope it's been beneficial for our listeners. Daniel, appreciate you. Appreciate you too. Yep. Corgan, thanks for being on here with us. Yep. Enjoy your break. You're currently on Thanksgiving break. Yep. You gonna have a big old fat turkey on Thursday? Oh yeah, definitely. Sweet. And ham. Sweet. Okay. So appreciate appreciate folks tuning in as we look to Jesus. Um, We hope it's been helpful for you. We hope you tune in next week. Thank you for joining us this week. Thank you.